Hello and welcome to the session on organizational hierarchy and security. Today we're going to be sharing how you can use an organizational hierarchy and restrict that so that individuals can only see the numbers that they're supposed to. This involves restricting both the rows and the columns of the data. So without further ado, let's go and have a look at our organizational hierarchy that we're going to be working with today. So with this particular organizational hierarchy, we have four layers with our meter at the top. Each of these individuals need to receive their own numbers based on their location within the hierarchy. The idea being that everybody can receive their own numbers plus anybody who reports into them directly or indirectly. So for instance, Almeida can view both Claytons and Loners. Loner is indirectly reporting via Clayton who is a direct report into Almeida. What you sometimes see in the situation is that a separate Excel file is created for each individual with their own numbers. This is really complicated to manage, especially as the organization grows and if there's a high interdependency on others. For instance, if Lona's numbers change, who's in the bottom left, then Clayton's had to change and Almeida's as well. A better approach is to combine these into a single Excel file. This single Excel file, instead of holding the data itself, gets the data from Power BI, which has the security enabled to ensure each individual can only see their own numbers. We'll go into how this is done in a bit. Better still, you can remove the Excel entirely and have only a Power BI report. So let's look at how we can do row level security with the kit coverage of the organization we'll be using and how the security will work when we build it out in Power BI. Here's our organization we started with, but we're just going to focus on three people to understand the concept. Those three people are Almeida, Clayton and Lona. So here we have a table of data with their three names in. We also have their manager names and because it's easier to work with integers rather than strings of data, we're going to have the employee ID and manager ID. This is going to be used to build a path together, which is going to be used for the security filter. So for instance, when we select Almeida, we are going to be selecting employee ID 3252. 3252 is going to appear in every layer of the hierarchy. So in all three rows, we can see Almeida's employee ID. That means Almeida is going to be able to see all three rows. When we select Clayton, we're going to be selecting employee ID 3277. 3277 only appears on two rows, which is Clayton's own row and Lona. It does not appear in Almeida. That's because Clayton reports into Almeida and therefore should not have access to see her data. Finally, when we get down to Lona, Lona's ID will only appear on her own row. Therefore, Lona can only see her own numbers. Let's take this example a step further. If we pretend to be Clayton for a moment, we can see the two rows of data. When we link this table to another table of data using the employee ID, what will happen is the security will propagate from the table which we've applied the security on through to the table that we haven't applied it on. So in this example, Clayton will not be able to see the first two rows because they are related to our leader's employee ID, but we'll be able to see the following four, which are related to either his own or loaners. Let's now have a look at a demo of how this works and build it out in Power BI. Here we have our Excel sheet showing each of the employees. We have a row for each employee in the organization. So for instance, Almeida on row two and Clayton on row three. We also have the employee ID and manager IDs. We're going to be using this later on to create that path for the security. We've also got the national insurance number in here. Now, later on, we're going to be looking at object level security, in which case we're going to want to hide the national insurance number for all employees, except those from HR. Finally, we've got the username we need the username in order to identify who's actually logged in. Okay, so let's look at the actuals. So 
So the actual data that we're going to be linking to contains the employee ID, the year and a value. It's a very simplified data set. So here we are in Power BI. Let's go to Excel workbook, select the Excel we just looked at and connect to our data. Once we've connected to our data, let's select actual and employees. And instead of loading the data directly to our model, let's click on transform data. This brings up the Power BI query editor. And here you can see the employees table, which we looked at in Excel. And also the actuals table. So let's just close and apply that and bring that into our model. With it brought in on the left hand side, let's go down and look at the relationship. In this case, Power BI has automatically built the relationship between employees and actuals for us. This is using the employee ID as we were in the example on the slides. Let's now go back over to our visual and let's start building out our visual. So in this example, we're using the matrix visual and we're going to be using the employee full name and we're going to be using a value. So we can see each employee with a value assigned to them. Just going to do a little bit of formatting here so you can see them a bit easier. So that's the headers formatted and also the values. Now let's go over and look at our employees table and add in a new column of data. This column is going to be used for our security. So we're going to call this one full path and we need to pass in a couple of parameters. We're going to use the path function and we're going to pass in employee ID and manager ID. You can see we now have a full path containing all of the employee and manager IDs. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over and start using our external tools. The first external tool that we're going to use today is DAX Studio, and we're going to use DAX Studio in order to write our DAX, which is going to be used for our security. So the first thing we're going to do within DAX Studio is evaluate our employees table. This is going to return a record of all of our employees, exactly as we've seen before. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add an additional column on this in order to identify the current user. We're just going to use CU to identify the current user. And for now, we're just going to return the number one. So we have an additional column in our data and that column says CU as the number one for all employees. Obviously, this isn't what we actually want. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable. And this variable is going to identify the user who's logged in based on their username. So their employee logged in name, and it's going to return their employee ID. So we're going to use lookup value in order to achieve this. With lookup value, the thing that we want to actually look up is the employee ID. So if we go to the employees table and we search for employee ID, and the thing we're going to search with is going to be the employee's username. So let's put in the employee's username. For this example, let's just start off by picking a random employee, in this case, Clayton. OK, so we now have a variable in order to identify Clayton's employee ID. Whenever we do a variable, we always need a return. And we've got the current user now, instead of returning number one, let's return the variable we've created, user logged in. So we can see for every row of data, it's returned Clayton's employee ID, which is 3277.
The next thing we need to do is we need to use this user logged in and figure out whether it's contained within the full path. So we have the employee's full path. We use a comma and we use user logged in. And now when we execute that, we return a true or false for every row of the data. So this now shows all of the rows that Clayton should have access to. So for instance, Clayton is allowed to see his own row of data, but also that of loners, Temesha, and Ebony. And you can see that 3277 appears in all of their paths. Back in our Power BI desktop, we're going to set up the security. To do that, we need to go over to the modeling tab and click manage roles. We're going to create a new role. This role is going to be called sales employees. We're going to select the employees table and go over to DAX Studio. Within DAX Studio, we're going to remove all the elements pertaining to add columns and just leave the path contains. We also need to remove the evaluate. Let's copy that and head back over to Power BI. Back in Power BI, let's paste that in and save it down. Now, when we go over to view as and we select sales employee, we'll be viewing the data as if we were Clayton. If, however, we try to impersonate a different individual, so for instance, we go view as, we have the sales employee selected, but instead of impersonating Clayton, we try and impersonate Lona. So we put Lona's full email address in and select OK. It will remain as Clayton. The reason for this is in the security, we're actually using Clayton's name. So if you go back over to Manage Views, select the employee, we can see that the DAX still contains Clayton.Nivian at company.com. Let's replace this instead with user principal name. User principal name is a special DAX function in order to identify the user who's logged in. Let's paste that in and save it. And now we see that it will change over to loner.star, so loner stars data only. When we click stop viewing, we'll no longer see loner.view, but if we go into other users and sales employees and we impersonate a different user, so for instance, Darren, We will now see Darren and all of Darren's reports, whether they be direct or indirect. So now we're going to look at object level security. Object level security works entirely differently to row level security. Instead of hiding a row of data, we can hide an entire object, so an entire table of data, or an individual column. In the example we're going to be looking at today, we're going to take the table that we had before and we're going to have that additional column that we discussed, which is the national insurance number. The national insurance number being a very sensitive piece of information that we don't want to be shared with our manager or anybody else within the organisation. Let's go into a demo and look at how we deal with this. Back within our Power BI, let's go over to the table of data and look at that information. Within that table of information, we can see the national insurance number that I mentioned. Let's now visualize that national insurance number. So let's take a copy of the previous data we had by doing control C and control V. And putting it just to the right of the previous data we had. This time, instead of returning the values, let's return the national insurance ID. Let's drag that over to our values field it's now returning the national insurance number for each employee. Let's now go over to manage roles and let's create a new role for HR only. So only HR employees can see this national insurance ID.
Let's now save this down without making any further changes because we can't actually set up object level security within Power BI. Instead, we have to go over to our external tools again, and this time we're going to be using Tabular Editor. Within Tabular Editor, we have a full list of all the metadata within our model. So for instance, on the left-hand side here, we can see that we've got the employees table, including the national insurance number. With that selected, we can go over to the right-hand side here and we can get all of the information and the properties relating to the national insurance number. For instance, we have the object level security and we can see two roles, HR and sales employee, which we're going to change from default to read for HR and to none for sales employee. Once we've done that, we're going to save and we're going to head back over to our Power BI desktop. Back in our Power BI desktop, you can see that we still got our national insurance number on the right hand side. When we go view as and we select HR and we click OK, you can see that that national insurance number stays both in the table of data and within the right hand side. However, if we stop viewing as the HR employees, and now switch over to viewing as our sales employees, we will see a very different behavior. So let's just select sales employee, select OK. And now you'll see that that table of data is showing an error because that column of data no longer exists within our reports. Here we're showing the error message that you get when you click on the details. And here on the right side, we're showing that the national insurance number no longer exists. So the final thing we need to do is head over to the Power BI service. We've got our data set row in object level security. We need to click on the three ellipses and select security. We have both our roles here for HR and sales team. I need to add all of the members that I want to be added to the HR team and also save it down. And I need to do exactly the same for the sales team. Usually you wouldn't use individual usernames, you'd use active directory groups. So you'd have a group for HR employees and a group for the sales team. Thank you for watching this video on using the organizational hierarchy to set up row and object level security. If you've got any comments, please leave them below.